RM Sotheby's is the world's largest collector car auction house by total sales. They are the preeminent market maker of high quality collector cars and collections, regardless of size or complexity. By working in partnership with the Sotheby's team and its network of 80 offices in 40 countries, RM Sotheby's has established the largest client network of any collector car auction house in the world. Join the RM Sotheby's family by connecting with one of their car specialists at rmsotheby's.com or contact me directly at gstanley at rmsotheby's.com. LLC TLC is here to save you money on all of your vehicle purchases. LLC TLC will permanently register your classic cars in Montana to avoid any annual renewal fees. As your registered agent, they will handle everything for you so you never have to step foot in Montana. And as a listener of this podcast, LLC TLC is offering 30% off your entire package. Simply go to LLCTLC.com forward slash classic or mention this podcast when you contact LLC TLC directly. Okay, well, I'm very excited to have Anna Louise on, who is a wonderful artist that focuses in on some incredible car artwork. So, Anna Louise, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, we're at Automobilia in Monterey, and I just saw your work, and I love your style, and it sounds like you've been doing this for a very long time, so tell us a little bit about yourself. So, I started um, studying artwork well, from a very young age. I okay. went to Central St. Martin's Art College, and I went to the Royal College of Art in London, and then started painting all sorts of things on location. So I considered myself a reportage artist, so reporting what I saw but with images as opposed to a journalist with, with words. Okay. Um, I got involved with the Royal Navy um, when I was out of, well, during college, actually. Back in 2001, I approached the Royal Navy and started painting their ships. Their wait, wait, so you approached the Royal Navy? Yes. Yeah. How do you do that? So I was at a wedding. My cousin married a captain of a submarine. And at the <laughs> wedding, I discussed with another captain of a submarine sitting next to me if I could get on board a sub and do some painting. He said, no, you're a civvy. We can't get you on board. But what we can do is potentially get you on board a, a frigate. So I joined HMS Cornwall, which is an, a Type 22 frigate, at sea for a week. I, went, I drove down to Plymouth, um, boarded the ship, and went on a week's exercise, um, witnessing things like fire exercises, man overboard exercises, um, going in the ops room, I was given carte blanche to basically go around the ship and do paintings and photograph um, people and take sound recordings. And I had an exhibition at the Naval Club in Mayfair. Um, and then I just kept going back and doing other things with the Navy. Then they invited me onto HMS Illustrious and that was an amazing experience. I was um, dumped onto the ship by a seeking helicopter in a, in a sort of orange, <laughs> suit um, and then one of my friends basically said to me why don't you paint cars because obviously the Royal Navy is quite niche and Very much maybe so. try coming to Monaco for the Grand Prix so I went to the Historique back in 2008 sat down in the paddock started painting someone's Ferrari got tapped on the shoulder and said when you finish that can you please paint my Formula Junior Stanguilini and it just took off from there. So I know we're going to talk about cars but I gotta go back to ships for a second were you in love with ships like why did you think that I'm going to start painting ships. When I was at college, I was quite envious of some of my colleagues who were basically really good at painting from life, from, okay. from, from their imagination. So they would be able to do amazing book illustrations from their heads, you know, coming yeah. up with really imaginative drawings. And I couldn't do that. I like to draw what's in front of me, something okay. that I can physically see with my own eyes, and then I capture it. So I was doing a lot of paintings, for example, backstage at London Fashion Week painting the models, getting ready for the catwalks. Okay. I'd go into dental surgeries and paint people having their teeth operated on. Oh my goodness. Um, I would go to tattoo shops and uh, basically all these random places, even strip clubs in London. I'd go in the evenings and sit and draw the, the, the girls dancing with the guys sitting in chairs, sort of watching them on stage. So I was always painting what was in front of me. And that was what excited me because I was feeling the atmosphere. I was yeah. within the environment. Um, so I. I basically was speaking to my tutor about this, just saying I was concerned that I didn't have this ability to draw from my head. And he was like, listen, there are some really successful artists out there, like Linda Kitson, who was the official Falklands war artist, who was sent out to the Falklands by one of the big newspapers. I think it was the Times. I, I can't yeah. exactly remember, but um, I actually ended up meeting Linda Kitson. And I was just so enamored with her incredible charcoal drawings of ships and the, the troops out in the Falklands. And I just thought that is just so exciting to be a war artist being yeah. sent out on ships to sort of cover something. Because after the Vietnam War, there were so many photographers who were just given, you know, access 
um, to take those horrific photographs. And basically, when, when the Falklands happened, Margaret Thatcher stopped, our, our English Prime Minister at the time, basically banned any photographers um, in the Falklands. So Linda was sent as a, as a reportage mm. artist to mm -hmm. capture what was happening in imagery. Um, so that whole idea that seeing her work made me think, oh, I'd like to do something with the Royal Navy. And, and of course, I did do a lot of work with them for a long time. But then it was quite a hard sell because not many yes. people want a picture of a you know, a Lynx helicopter on their wall <laughs> or a Type 22 frigate right. or an aircraft carrier. Wow, that is really amazing. So, okay, so you transitioned to automobiles. <laughs> you said at the Monaco Grand Prix? Historic, back in 2008. That's a great, great one to transition to, right? Yeah, it was on my doorstep pretty much. I was completely broke. I didn't know how I was going to afford to go. A friend of mine said, you can stay with me. I'll introduce you to loads of people. You just have to pay for your flights. So I did that, <clears throat> and it was one of the best decisions I ever made because I did a few paintings in the paddock, I pretty much sold all of them, and someone said, are you coming to Monza next week? And I'm like, what's Monza? It's a, right. it's a track in Italy, you should come. So I went to Monza, then I went to Spa, then I went to Goodwood, Silverstone, Brands Hatch, Donington, Thruxton, all these places that I'd never even heard of, and I was literally every weekend, every other weekend, going to a different track and painting. And then this guy I met, an amazing guy called Jason Stewart Wright, who races um, historic cars, said, would you like to do the Monte Carlo Rally? And I was like... I think so, yeah, that sounds really cool. <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> so he flew me out to Finland. I did the Porsche Camp for ice driving course. Oh, then yeah. I flew to Italy in Sardinia. I did um, a Formula Ford racing course. Got my driving license, my racing license. Started racing. I raced at Monza. Wow. That was my first race. Then Silverstone in the pre-63 GT race in an Alfa Romeo Giulietta Sprint Veloce, 1963. I did the Monte Carlo Rally twice in an Alfa Romeo Giulietta TI, wow. 1957 car. And then... I did a tour auto in a TZ, TZ1. Um, so I've had some experience sort of rallying and racing and... Had Sounds some... like you jumped in with both feet. I did. Yeah, wow. and that's what I think is quite Both cool. feet in a racing helmet. But it's, I'm not just painting these cars, I've lived the experience as yeah. well. I've, I've you know, gone to many, uh, I've done many rallies, not top end ones necessarily like tour auto, but lots of rallies that are organized by friends where you've just got lots of young people just having a really great time with, with older people as well who have the cars and this is back in my 20s and 30s and just that's awesome. driven around sardinia and and sicily and the dolomites and you know some really incredible experiences that's i just awesome. i just love the car world you know it's like a big traveling family it is at these historic events you're right it is well let's look at some of your paintings here could you tell us a little bit about these and some of your like some of your inspirations as far as style wise well i love color yeah um when i first started painting maybe start with the paintings over here so when sure. i first went to monaco back in 2008 i was very much just focusing on ink on paper bear in mind i was at a track um, i was in the grandstand sitting looking down at rascas corner for example and this was probably done in about an hour and a half two hours as the cars were racing around so they're so quick around the track as you can see they're very very illustrative, um, quite whimsical, splashing ink, just very energetic. And I feel that they sort of capture the mood and the atmosphere of the event. And obviously, as the years progressed, I was going back more and more. I started introducing a bit of color. I would show you another one that I just sold today, so I can't, unfortunately, but that had a little bit more color. And then over the years, um, because I've been going back to Monaco literally every other year since 2008, minus COVID, and also recently for, for the F1 events as well. I'm just so used to that part of the world. Sure. I love the, you know, I love the, the backdrop. You've got the sea, you've got the palm trees, the fantastic architecture juxtaposed with the more modern buildings and the cranes. For me, it's just a visual. I absolutely uh, love, just, I love this one. I mean, that's just such an iconic this, turn. This, yeah, the, the, the Fairmont, which used to be known as Lowe's Corner. So that is painted from a friend of mine's apartment. It's called the Mirabeau oh, Building. Oh, from your friend's apartment? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I would stay at the Mirabeau Building, and I would, on his balcony, sit and just look down at the Fairmont Corner. So that's the Fairmont Hotel. So I sold that last year in London, um, and I've done multiple scenes of this viewpoint. So this is another painting, exactly the same viewpoint pretty much, but in very different colors, more softer palette. Um, all of these paintings I've basically done for many years in ink on paper as I've been there live, standing on top of the Fairmont, looking down onto the track, painting as the cars are racing around the track. But it's been in more recent years that I've wanted to scale up and do bigger paintings on canvas. So these are all displayed here, oil on paper paintings. I probably won't be doing that many more, even though I love the medium and I love the way they look in, in glass frames. They're all AR glass. 
Um, but it, they're a bit of a pain to ship around the world. They're very heavy. Obviously, glass can crack if you're not careful. So from now on, I'm just focusing on painting oil on canvas because you can transport them more easily. They're sure. lighter. Yeah. Um, but I've brought six large oil on paper paintings here with me. I've got some of my naughty car paintings outside, which are a little bit different. Did you say your what? Naughty car paintings. Have you seen them outside? I have not. I'll have to check them out. OK, well, I will show you the cards. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so these are a little bit more risque. These started when I was introduced by Alan de Cadenet when, when he was alive back in 2010 to a car dealer who basically commissioned a painting of his Aston Martin, but he asked for a slightly risque theme. Yeah. It turned out he and his girlfriend went into bondage, and he asked me for a painting that reflected that Oh my goodness, interest. that's a customer request, like custom, right? It was, and I was a bit like, oh God. <laughs> but I did a sketch for him, and he um, asked for a few changes. One in particular was changing the whip to a paddle. And I Googled bondage and got a bit of inspiration and created this piece. And he was quite horrified and said, I can't hang out in my office and said, what do you expect? You, you commissioned a bondage painting, right. essentially. Yeah. And uh, he was actually very good humored about it. And um, he bought it. And I tagged a bunch of my friends and car collector friends on Facebook at the time. And then I was just inundated with people commissioning these this naughty series. So it wasn't actually my idea originally, but they've, sure. they've served me well. So they are very much commissioned based. Um, I have one client in Switzerland who commissioned 30. And they all hang in his garage above his 30 cars in his garage. Okay. Um, they're a bit like Marmite, you love them or you hate them. Right. They're just a bit of fun. Sure. Um, but then my real passion is just creating these bigger, larger, sort of atmospheric, colorful, vibrant, whimsical, cheerful paintings of, of places I love. So for example, obviously this is my Monaco series. Last year I was exhibiting on my stand at um, Salon Privé, um, Blenheim Palace. I met a chap who happened to be the CEO of Saudi Motorsport, a guy mm. called Martin Whitaker, who commissioned me to paint the Formula One um, poster for the Grand Prix in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia this wow. year. So yeah. I went out to Saudi, to Jeddah. Um, I've been there four times now this year. Wow. And um, so that was a really cool commission and I had an exhibition of my work out there. I'm doing a new series of paintings based on, on Saudi Arabia and the track in Jeddah, um, as well as other places. I mean, I don't just paint cars, I paint portraits of people's houses, I paint boats, I paint aeroplanes, Spitfires, all sorts of things. Ships? Um, started with the ships. <laughs> Tell me about the uh, pink painting here. So this is a scene that I absolutely love. Um, it's basically in the paddock, sort of where the cars all line up before they go down to race, uh, underneath the Chopin sign. Um, and it's sort of facing the sort of Sandevot sort of corner. This is the, 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 the tunnel goes up to the top of the hill there. So this is just basically a scene that I've photographed and sketched many times. And I just decided one day to, to do an oil painting of it. And I primed the canvas in, in this sort of musky pink color, which is probably quite unusual considering a lot of painters that paint these um, car paintings, they tend to be quite masculine and, mm. you know, um, mm -hmm. and I just, I just wanted to try something a little bit different. And I think it works really well. It's, it's very unique. People recognize my style pretty much instantly when they see my work. And as I said, it, I, I just love the color. And it is, if you're actually at these racing events, it is so vibrant, it's loud, it's, it's, it's sort of just so much going on. It's, it's a sensory overload. And um, I really love that because if you think about it, like you're not, it's very hard to capture the speed of a car or the people in the stands, but you capture the essence of it, right? The way you, you I think a it. lot of people like to paint the cars in motion. And, and I do that from time to time, but actually I also love there's a lot of there's a lot of sort of downtime when you're racing. You know, obviously in the palette, the people working on the cars and mechanics. It's all about the people for me. It's not just about the cars. I love painting people as yeah. well, the characters that are involved. So even though they're sort of very um, impressionistic in a way. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to. I don't know. I see some little impressionistic aspects to it. Yeah, I mean, know? I'm not into I'm not into creating something that's a photographic representation whatsoever. Yeah. This is about capturing the atmosphere in some way, but putting my own soul into it. You know, it's, it's, it's important when I, I collect a lot of artwork myself. I like buying original art from other artists. Mm. I like supporting the community. And I feel like if I want something on my wall, I want it to be an original piece. And I just want to collect something that shows that artist. 
not just what they're painting, but shows themselves as well. Yeah. Well, I absolutely love your work. It's wonderful. And now you said that you do live paintings at the Quail and also at Pebble Beach? I do. So you will find me on the lawn painting on an 18 by 24 inch sketchbook. I sit down, I decide to paint a car, either it's a commission or it's something that I just want to paint. So I start with pencil very quickly, just capturing the, the, the outline and then pretty much within the first 10-15 minutes start painting with ink and watercolour. And the paintings usually take between two and four hours, depending on how busy the scene is, how many cars, how many people. The quail is always fantastic because there's so much going on with the big Rolex watches or clocks. Um, the, the, there's, there's always so much to paint, all the characters, the, the glamorous ladies walking past. And that's the thing about painting from life, because if you're painting from a photograph, it's flat. You just, you just see what's in the photograph and that's it. Whereas if you're at an event like the Quail, you could have a very glamorous looking woman walking past in a fabulous hat, but she might just take two seconds to walk past you, but she can be captured. Then you'll get a dog in a Gucci suit. They have to be captured too. They obviously. have to be captured. You yeah. know, you've got, you've got various <laughs> interesting characters and it's about editing and choosing what you want to include and sometimes choosing to exclude things as well that I don't necessarily want in my picture. So do you know what you're painting at the Quail or at Pebble at this point? Not quite yet. I like to ha I get I get to um, go to the events quite early in the morning. I always go to, to Dawn Patrol. Mm -hmm. I catch up with all my, my friends and colleagues and um, have a good look around and see what takes my fancy. Often I get permission to do things in advance and um, I have a few pieces that I will probably, I, I'm not 100% sure what's happening with them yet, but I'll, I'll be basically turning up and thinking, what am I gonna paint today? That's awesome. Well, what's the best way for our listeners to find you? Instagram's a good start, A.L. Okay. Felstead. My website is alfelstead.com. Awesome, well, thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure, thank you for having me.